a conflicting fashion dynasty, a stunning murder, a war of greed and a real life story of glamour. You'll be enjoying all of this in one story. This story recounts the real horrific tale of Patricia Reggiani, a beautiful socialite. She was arrested and accused of orchestrating the murder of her designer husband, Maurizio Gucci, in 1997. So take a seat and prepare yourself to sip some hot tea, because this wildlife story is going to astonish you for sure. Maurizio Gucci Maurizio Gucci was born in Florence in 1948 to Italian actress Sandra Ravel and fashion designer Rudolfo Gucci the grandson of the legendary fashion designer Guccio Gucci. He married Reggiani in 1973, but the marriage was doomed a decade later when things started to fall apart. After his father died in 1983, the company was passed down to Maurizio Gucci as an only child after his father. His uncle and cousins, who owned the other half of the company with him, were a source of contention for years until he could pull off a heist with the assistance of Investcorp to buy them out. During this process, the couple's marriage came crashing down. Maurizio packed his belongings and departed one evening, apparently fed up with Reggiani's continuous messing with his affairs. Meanwhile, the business under his management suffered a massive loss of millions of dollars. At the very least, Reggiani had been correct in his assessment that Maurizio was mismanaging his company and was unable to generate enough money to carry out his ambitious plans. As a result, his personal wealth was diminishing, and he was forced to sell Gucci to Investcorp for $120 million in 1993 thus ending his career. He even left his family and children, including two daughters, Allegra and Alessandra, in 1985. After that, Mr. Gucci started to live with Paola Franci, an interior designer with whom he had started a relationship while still married. At the time of his murder, Maurizio Gucci was living with his girlfriend in Milan. The Married Life of Maurizio Gucci and Reggiani They tied the knot in 1972 when they were both about 24 years old. Maurizio was an only kid whose mother died when he was five years old and whose father had always been overprotective of his well-being. In an interview, Reggiani said that Maurizio was completely at ease with me. We had a good time since we worked as a team. The couple's luxurious apartment in New York's Olympic Tower was purchased by the elder Gucci, who also owned several other properties. Known as early adopters of celebrity coupledom, the couple enjoyed a chauffeur-driven vehicle with the personalized license plate Maurizia while touring Manhattan. When Jackie Onassis and the Kennedy family were all in town, they went out with them and their friends. According to Reggiani, we were a lovely couple and we had a beautiful life, of course. It's still painful to think about it now. In the early 1980s, she recalls extravagant color-themed parties she gave. One was all orange and yellow, including the food. Similarly, Maurizio purchased her a 64-meter-long yacht, the Creole, for touring private islands to commemorate the birth of their second daughter, Allegra. It is still owned and sailed by the couple's two daughters and is worth millions of dollars. Additionally, they had a ski lodge in St. Moritz, a vacation house in Acapulco, and a farm in Connecticut, contributing to their idyllic lifestyle. Maurizio Gucci acquired his father's 50% share in Gucci following Rodolfo's death in 1983. And according to Reggiani, that was the time when everything began to fall apart. Maurizio went completely impractical. Until then, I served as his primary advisor on all things pertaining to Gucci. Nevertheless, he was determined to be the greatest and therefore stopped listening to me. As a result, the Gucci brand has been losing respect due to the over-licensing of its renowned double G mark and the mass manufacturing of canvas totes and bags. To bring it back to its former high-end grandeur, Maurizio planned to return it to the fine workmanship on which the business was founded. After selling his remaining share in the fashion business to Investcorp for between $150 million and $200 million in 1993, Gucci effectively ended the company's Italian ownership and made Maurizio Gucci a wealthy man. Surprisingly, Gucci is now part of the Caring Luxury Group's portfolio based in France. In addition, Reggiani was awarded about the same amount in a divorce settlement, approximately $1 million each year. Reggiani, on the other hand, was dissatisfied. In another interview at the time, she expressed her dissatisfaction with Gucci's handling of the company's operations, saying that he recently told me, do you know why our marriage failed? Because you thought you were the president and there is only one president here. The day of Maurizio Gucci's murder. It was a beautiful spring morning on March 27, 1995, when Gucci was going up the stairs to his office building in Milan's Via Palestro 20. Giuseppe Onorato, the building's doorman, was the sole eyewitness, and he recently recounted the incident to The Guardian. Mr. Gucci came with a bag of magazines and greeted everyone with a smile. Then I saw a hand. That lovely, immaculate hand was pointing a pistol at me. I was speechless. Three times in the back and once in the head, Gucci was shot several times before collapsing and dying on the stairs of his office building. 
Onorato was shot twice in the arm, but survived. Reggiani was an obvious suspect since she had publicly expressed her intention to kill Gucci after their bitter breakup. Still, the investigation remained cold for two years because there was no evidence to support her claim. Finally, her arrest was made possible by a tip-off in 1997, and the trial started the following year. A nasty controversy was the last thing Gucci wanted, according to Giussi Fiere, a renowned fashion journalist and cultural critic based in Milan, who is known for his characteristic spiky orange hair. The company wanted to avoid the whole situation, and they desired that everyone else do so as well, says the author. The continuing growth of the label over the last two decades has pushed recollections of the murder even further into the background. Gucci is presently riding a high of unprecedented proportions. As a result of Alessandro Michel's androgynous new creative direction, Westminster Abbey was transformed into the most revered of all venues for his newest collection, which was unveiled last week. On the other hand, amnesia is strange since the tale has everything. Glitter, greed, sex, murder, treachery, and a burning case of social anxiety. So a brand like Gucci having such a primitive appeal arguably speaks more about it than all of the sales statistics in the world combined. As soon as Reggiani was apprehended, the media christened her the Black Widow and ran with all of the conventional speculations about her possible motives. She was envious of Maurizio's girlfriend, she wanted his money, was resentful of his negligence, and she was just plain irrationally angry. But if there was a grain of truth in any of them, there was likely something deeper at work as well. Everything Reggiani was derived from her status as a Gucci, explains Fieri. It was her whole identity, even as an ex-wife. She was enraged at Maurizio for having betrayed her trust. Reggiani was unable to let go of the past, even after her release from jail. Who was Patrizia Reggiani? Patrizia Reggiani was born in 1948 in a tiny village outside Milan to a waitress mother and a considerably older father who earned his money in trucking. During the 1970s and 1980s, she was dubbed the Liz Taylor of luxury brands. She went on to become a successful fashion designer. Even though they were not members of Milan's upper class, the family was wealthy. Then in 1973, Reggiani and Gucci were introduced at a party by a mutual friend who had worked her way up the social ladder in Milan. The couple married the following year. Reggiani rose to the position of top advisor for Gucci, and she married and had two daughters, Alessandra and Allegra. In 1985, after 12 years of marriage, Gucci informed Reggiani that he was leaving on a business trip, but he never returned. The night he was murdered, he had been living with his girlfriend, Paola Franci, for the previous five years. When Gucci was forced to sell the company in 1993 after the empire suffered millions of dollars in losses while under his control, Reggiani was enraged at him for abandoning the company. The Trial After a sensationalized trial in 1998, it was revealed that Reggiani had hired four accomplices to carry out Gucci's murder. The team included her former friend and psychic, Pina Oriema, who admitted to arranging the hitman and the getaway driver to carry out Gucci's murder. One particularly eye-catching piece of evidence found in Reggiani's residence was her Cartier journal, which had a single word entry for the day of Gucci's murder, Paradiesos, the Greek word for paradise, on the day of the murder. Upon being found guilty of planning his murder, Reggiani was sentenced to 29 years behind bars. However, her daughters, Alessandra, then 21 years old, and Allegra, 17 years old, had claimed that her sentence should be reversed because a benign brain tumor had changed her behavior and demeanor. The hitman who killed Gucci was sentenced to life in prison. Oriema, Reggiani's personal astrologer, who was the first to contact the murderers, was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Where is Patricia Reggiani now? When Reggiani completed her 16-year prison sentence in 2014, she was eligible to participate in a work release program that required her to find employment and volunteer work. Reggiani was recruited by the Milanese costume jewelry company Bozart to serve as a design consultant. However, she was questioned by a television team from an Italian reality program at the same time, who inquired as to why she had hired a hitman to murder Maurizio Gucci. Patricia, why did you employ a hitman to assassinate Maurizio Gucci? Why didn't you just go ahead and shoot him yourself? My eyesight isn't that great, she said with a deadpan. I didn't want to miss out on anything. The upcoming movie House of Gucci is scheduled to be released on November 25th in the United States and November 26th in the United Kingdom. After the official release, let's see how Lady Gaga impresses the audience with her acting and beautiful looks. If you're visiting for the first time, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos in the future.